I want to talk about how I use bolts in my sample application. So if you head over to GitHub, if you've not already done so, um, my repository for this particular application is LOL Book of Champions iOS SQLite. Feel free to go ahead and grab it. I have other videos on how to get it set up. So um, gr go grab that or look at the code here in my GitHub repo when I'm referencing how I integrated bolts with this application. Let's go ahead and open up Xcode for the Low Book of Champions application. And I referenced bolts as a from CocoaPods. And as we can see here, I have in my pod file a reference to bolts version 1.1.5. All you have to do is run pod install from the command line and CocoaPods will make sure that it downloads and builds the Bolts framework into your application. Personally, I find promises to be the preferred way of inter interacting with asynchronous code. I also, as you may know from watching my other videos, am a huge fan of the command pattern. And I feel like Bolts and the command pattern are perfectly suited for one another. So one of the things that I said in my other videos that I didn't care for is the fact that I named my commands task. And I think you'll see why now when integrating with bolts, because bolts also use the name task to refer to a promise. So in my opinion, it makes it a little bit confusing that my commands are called tasks. And I wish I had named my commands command instead of, so this would have been called NIO query command, but nonetheless, I used the, the, the word task here, and please don't confuse that with a BF task, which I'll talk about in another video. Let's take a look at the, the core integration here. If we go to the task folder of my core application module, I have a protocol called NIO task. Again, this is a command, and I have a simple very simple definition. Every command must implement the run async method and it returns a promise. Again, BF task is a promise. So I've put a stake in the ground and I said every single command in my application, when you call execute, which is run async, it will return to you a promise. So that is the way you interact with every command in this application. Just call it and you'll get back a promise. If we take a quick look at all the commands in the application, starting with the app module, I have, you'll notice that all of my commands are in the task folder, subfolder, and every single command has a run async method, which returns a promise. So here's the only command in the app module is called query task. And then if I look at data dragon, there's also a task subfolder and there's all kinds of different commands here. And each one of them declares a run async method that returns a promise. So if I look at all the implementations, run async returns a promise. This is just the standard interface every command has in this application. Call a command, it runs asynchronously, you get back a promise. And then here's some internal tasks, same thing. Run async gives back a promise. So it's a very simple and consistent interface. It makes it easy for anybody that's using my commands or executing them to understand how to interact with them and what they get back in return. 